What is up, people on the internet? It is I, Michael Shockman, here with the next episode of The Operative, No One Lives Forever. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh man, I'm having a great time playing this. I hope you guys are looking forward to the continued uh, playthrough of this game. It's been great so far. I've really been enjoying it. The comedy is hilarious, the action is superb. Um, and just the story is pretty good too. So, um, without any further ado, uh, before we get into things, uh, before we get, before we get this episode started, uh, if you wouldn't mind doing me a really quick favor, as per usual, just take a second, please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this video out to all your friends and family, and also be sure to hit that bell icon so you never miss an episode. Also, if you want to come and see what I'm up to day to day um, from a distance, you can come and check me out on Twitter at DM Shockman. And if you want to help support the channel financially, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash DM Shockman. Just uh, know that every penny that I get from Patreon goes to funding and creating uh, and supporting my work and the, cre the continued creation of new and better content for you guys. So with that being said, and without any further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. Welcome to Advanced Field Tactics. We've cooked up a stunning new perfume for you. It temporarily blinds and dazes anyone caught in its influence. Do be careful not to spray it upwind. one of our most refined inventions, the P421 K9 Persuader. Just start it up with this convenient pull cord and set it on the ground. Using sophisticated all-factory sensors, the P421 will seek out the nearest dog within its range and release a cloud of pheromone gas designed to enamor canines of either sex. Quite useful for incapacitating bothersome guard dogs. Use your robotic poodle to distract the guard dog. Pardon my French, but this is a ro- they basically created a robo bitch. In the literal sense of the word. That's kind of funny. And look at the fucking teeth on that thing, man. Oh my god, this thing's like a, a robotic pooch from hell. And they had to make it a poodle too, Jesus. It is possible that the reclusive Baron Archibald Dumas is somehow connected to the disappearance of Dr. Schenker. It will be up to you and Agent Goodman to establish the link, if it even exists. The first step is to meet the Baron in person and size him up. Whatever you do, don't blow your cover. Okay, this brings up a really good point. Uh, about this game. There are not many, but there are a few missions, this one included, that are just so infuriatingly difficult because you can't kill anybody. You have to use stealth. And I'm, let's face it, I'm not a stealthy guy when it comes to my playthrough. So I will be skipping this entire thing. Um, we will be going on to the next mission. Um, so bear with me. Uh, I will probably end up editing out the, the skipping sections. But, uh, um, so yeah. Um, I will be right back when, uh, we are, um, on to the next mission, so let's go. Good morning, how may I help you? We've an appointment with Baron de Mol. I'm sorry, but are you sure it was today? The Baron usually reserves Mondays for golf. Tuesdays and Thursdays are for skeet shooting, Wednesdays for fishing, and Friday afternoons for backgammon. Sounds like a busy schedule. How does he find time for appointments? His Lordship reserves Friday mornings between 11 and 11.15 a.m. for business matters. 
Well, I'm positive today was the day. Could you take another look at the appointment book? I suppose, but I can't see that it will do any good. The Baron's routine is quite established. Would you excuse me for a moment? She gotta that should go keep boom. her busy for about ten minutes, poor lass. All right, wait here just in case. I'll find the Baron's office and see if I can dig up some incriminating evidence. I've got a better idea. You wait here and I'll snoop around. No way, sugar pie. Remember what happened last time? Heads or tails? Tails. Heads, you lose. Sugar pie. Two out of three? Don't be a sore loser. Fine, but stay sharp. If you're seen, the mission's blown. If the Baron figures out you're in his office, the mission's blown. If you hurt anybody... The mission's blown, I know. Just remember what I said. Tails. Heads. Damn it! Ah, oh, don't pout. Your eyes get all small and piggy when you're sulking. How are you planning on getting in there anyway? I'll charm my way in. Well, I hope you brought some secret charm powder or something, otherwise you're in big trouble. I've got better weapons in mind. Like what? You've been staring at them all afternoon. Huh? All right, guys, I'm back. Um, this is one of the easier missions that we can do. Um, and it doesn't require any stealth, so um, we will be... I will be showing you guys this one. Yes? Hello, my name is Mia Haig. I have an appointment with Baron de Mont. No, you don't. Good day. Wait. What is it? Good afternoon. My name is Mia Haig. I'm from Men of Influence magazine. Men of Influence? What on earth are you doing here? This is the residence of Baron Archibald Dumas, is it not? <laughs> yes. Baron Dumas certainly seems to qualify as a man of influence, wouldn't you say? I suppose it would depend on how you choose to define influence. He is the president of Dumas Industrial Enterprises. Ah. He's wealthy. True. He's well respected. Hmm. He's dashing. <coughs> He's debonair. L listen, this is all very educational, but what exactly do you want? I was hoping to profile Baron de Maw for our Perfect Live series. Each month we cover a different person whose lifestyle and disposition exemplify perfect living. And you wish to include his lordship in this... series? Yes. The idea is to penetrate the myth and get to know the man. His pastimes, his ambitions, his accomplishments, the things <coughs> that make him tick. I see. He's a model aristocrat. Ah! Someone our readers can look up to. Of course. Will you excuse me for a moment, Miss Haig? I don't think I could forgive myself if I were to let this sublime opportunity pass by. I will discuss your request with his lordship and return presently with his answer. Thank you. Please, wait here. I shan't be a moment. Titties for them fitties! Oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. But I Very well. I had... His lordship has agreed to see you. Excellent. This should be amusing. What do you mean? Nothing. Follow me, please. <laughs> Miss Haig, sir. Splendid. Show her in. I'll leave you to your interview, darling. I'll be shopping for the rest of the afternoon. Yes, yes. Have a marvelous time, Chipmunk. Don't call me that. Mm. 
as you wish, my love. Pip pip. He's rather larger than I expected. Ah, yes. He's a big bundle of charisma and intelligence. If you're lucky, perhaps he'll regale you with his rousing safari adventures. Good day, Baron de Mor. Goodness, had I known you would be so sumptuous, I might have preened. Care for a drink? No, thank you. It's a little early for me. Well, I'll indulge for us both in that case. I hope you'll pardon me for saying so, but you're a ravishing girl, simply ravishing. That's very kind of you. I'm sure your wife feels absolutely spoiled by your abundant charm. Oh, she's a lucky old crow. I'll grant you that. Now then, Giles tells me you want to profile me for this magazine of yours. Yeah, men of influence, was it? Yes. Each issue we cover a different person in our Perfect Lives series, someone whose lifestyle and achievements serve as inspiration for our readers. Jolly good. You've come to the right place. That will be all, Giles. Actually, sir, I thought it might be worthwhile for me to stay, in case the young lady should desire anything at all. Splendid idea, Pip Pip. Yes, sir. I'll be right over here if you require anything, Miss Hague. Thank you, Baron de Mor. Do you mind if I record our interview? I'd rather devote my attention to you than to my notepad. And who could blame you? Record away, my dear. So then, where shall we begin? Eight. Um, clearly it takes a savvy intellectual individual. Clearly it takes a savvy, intelligent individual to succeed in business where you have. What's your secret? Well, I、uh, suppose it takes a solid appreciation of、uh, the fundamentals of business success. Once you have that, the rest is easy. What's the most heroic thing you did on safari? What's the most heroic thing you ever did on safari? Ah, yeah, splendid question. Well, I once、um, wrestled a lion to the ground and strangled it to death with my bare hands. Yes, I remember now. My porter had injured his leg and was about to be mauled. Dear Lord, dear Lord, how courageous! Yes, indeed. Oh, one doesn't really stop to think about these things. One merely acts. It's amazing you didn't come to harm. Yes, well, the Dumas lineage is renowned for resourcefulness and fortitude. All right.、Um, yeah, I'm sure our loyal readers would love to know what hunting rifle such a magnificent sportsman takes. I'm sure our loyal readers would love to know what hunting rifle such a magnificent sportsman favors on safari. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, it depends to some degree on the beast I'm tracking. For a tiger, I tend to favor the legendary Matterhorn Model Four Special Issue. Isn't that a .22 caliber target rifle? Uh. Seems a bit feeble for a tiger. Yes, but I savor a challenge. How intrepid! You must be quite a marksman to take down a tiger with a single round from a twenty-two. Well, sometimes it takes a few more than that. Still, even three rounds is impressive. It's usually more like seventeen or eighteen. Really, you might find a larger caliber to be more humane. Yes, but then you have to deal with all that nasty recoil. I see. This guy's an idiot. A twenty-two is literally a target a target thing. It's only used for target practice and for sport shooting. I noticed you have quite a collection of fine art about the place. Who are some of your favorite painters? Oh, I like them all. But surely there must be one or two whose work stands out for you. Certainly, I.、Uh, well, Fipstein is probably my favorite. I'm not familiar with his work. 
Not many people are. It's quite smashing. I'm sure you'd love it. What movement? Excuse me? Is he an impressionist, surrealist, constructivist, pointillist? Yeah, a little of everything, actually. He's quite versatile. Really? Do you have any of his work about? Normally, yes, but it's out being cleaned. Cleaned? Yes, those old paintings get so dusty. Ah. Is there anything that can strike fear into the heart of such a stalwart hunter as yourself? Frankly, no. Really? Nothing at all? Not that I can think of. Not even centipedes? Oh, dreadful things. Uh, yes, I suppose, perhaps centipedes. Personally, I'm terrified of rats. Oh, God, yes. Those beady, evil little eyes and sharp little vermin teeth. <laughs> Horrible animals, especially in a mob. And spiders. Oh, don't even mention them. How did you become so courageous? Oh, just something one's born with, I suppose. I imagine you've traveled to many exotic locales across the globe in your many daring adventures. Is there any place you favor above all others for hunting? Ah, most certainly. Let me guess. Kenya. Oh, goodness, no. I don't speak a word of Chinese. But Kenya's in Africa. Oh, I thought you were referring to the one in China. All right, then. How about Bengal? Cold weather doesn't agree with me. Rhodesia? Heavens. Madagascar? Not on your life. Where, then? Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm quite fond of Bristol. Partridge? Yeah, pandas. Giant pandas. Bristol, England? Yes, indeed. I wasn't aware of any giant pandas in Bristol. Well, they're oh, the important. pandas! I see. That makes me a sad panda. How has your approach to running Dumas Industrial Enterprises differed from your late father's? I'm not really sure what approach my father used, but I like to run things strictly by the book. By the book? Yes, you know, according to policy. But whose policies? I'm afraid that information is strictly classified. Next. Is there a message you'd like to share with your many admirers? Good hunting, my humble devotees. Well, that's all the questions I prepared. I must confess, I'm positive this will be our most popular Perfect Lives installment yet. Oh, you think so? Absolutely. Rarely does nature combine so many excellent qualities in one man. Our readers will be fascinated and maybe even a bit envious. One can hardly blame them. What I don't understand is where such a busy man finds the time to be a successful business tycoon, loving husband, daring hunter, astute philosopher, cultivated humorist, etc. Aren't you overwhelmed? Well, one learns to delegate. For example, although you wouldn't guess it, I'm only peripherally involved with Dumas Enterprises these days. Strictly in an advisory capacity, you see, to keep the company on track. How ingenious. Oh, well, I have my moments. But isn't it an awful risk to hand over operations to someone less accomplished in the subtleties of enterprise than yourself? Actually, it's safer that way. Really? Yes, you see, in my experience, the less one knows about running a business, the less he can screw up. I make all the important decisions. The rest is just, you know, paperwork. Still, you wouldn't want your competitors getting their hands on that paperwork. Oh, quite true. But we have a very large safe in which to store it. Safes can be cracked. 
No, not this one. Even if someone could get inside, he'd still have to get past the security system. Sounds daunting. Oh, it is. There are invisible beams. Infrared? Exactly. If you touch one of them, the doors lock and poison gas is released into the safe. How terrible. Oh, I'd like to meet the burglar who could get in there. It would take a lunatic even to attempt it. Or a fool. Thank you for your time, Baron de Maw. It's there been an eye-opening experience. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, never turn your back on a worthy cause, I always say. A worthy meal is more like it. Well done, Agent Archer. You may redeem yourself yet. In the meantime, don't get cocky. There's still work to be done. Command will fill you in on the details. Report there immediately. All right. Further investigation required. Is it possible he was putting on an act? I don't think so, sir. I'm fairly confident the man is an imbecile. I heard the tape and I gotta agree. Still, it's clear that Dumas Industrial Enterprises is somehow linked to harm. Well, didn't the Baron say that he wasn't really running the show anyway? Who's the vice president of the company? According to our research, his name is Damascus Valentine. D.V. What? His initials, Damascus Valentine, Dmitry Volkov. Coincidence? Seems rather tenuous. But nonetheless intriguing. In any case, we need to know what's in the safe the Baron mentioned to you. Mm. It won't be easy, naturally, but it could be the key to this investigation. I'm looking forward to the challenge, sir. That's the spirit. Mr. Smith, what did Intelligence find out about the building? It's a veritable fortress. Not only is there a suspiciously large and well-trained security staff, but they've also invested heavily in high-tech surveillance equipment, cameras, infrared alarm systems, the works. They must really have something to hide. Our thoughts exactly. So what's the plan? Who is going inside? You are. What? Why her? It's way too dangerous for a woman. Oh, don't ah. start with that again. Fuck you. Before joining Unity, Agent Archer was something of an expert in, um, covert infiltration, one might say. Breaking and entering, others might say. <laughs> Whatever the case, this assignment calls for stealth and subtlety. Yeah, yeah, I know. Why we're gonna subtlety isn't it. my specialty. I still think it's too dangerous for her to go in alone. Which is why you'll be providing a distraction for her downstairs. I like the sound of that. How do I get inside? Attempting entry on the ground floor would be suicide, even for an expert like Ms. Archer. The only way in is through the roof access. What did you have in mind? Am I going to have to parachute in? Too imprecise. Fortunately, there's an alternative. Dumas Enterprises is erecting a second skyscraper right next to its corporate headquarters. Our surveillance photos suggest that if you can get to the top of the new building, you can use a crane to cross over to the roof of the old one. The surveillance photos suggest that this is possible? <coughs> Close. You'll have a zip cord to cut the difference. I see. Once you're inside the building, you'll need to locate the president's office and find the safe. Photograph anything remotely suspicious. We don't want to tip our hand, so leave everything as you found it. The less they know about our mission, the better. Now then, time is of the essence. Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go into another one, this one, because it's only been about 20 or so minutes. Welcome to Advanced Field Tactics. Here we have the Sphinx Series M Code Breaker. Simply attach it to a standard 10-key security pad, and it will run through a series of combinations until it breaks the code. The duration of this process is determined by the complexity of the code, so it may be advisable to hide until the procedure is complete. Try out your code breaker on this keypad. Skadoosh! We've 
added an infrared scanner to your sunglasses to help you circumvent the security systems you're likely to encounter. If you see suspicious-looking fixtures like these mounted on a wall, be sure to switch on your scanner lest you announce your presence unintentionally. One second, guys. I don't remember. I, for some reason, am uh, blanking on the control for that. Configure controls. Function with control. Which is funny. Guard.
Lockheed Archer. Please report to the war room. Thank you. Agent Goodman's death is a terrible blow, no question about it. But although this mission was costly, it may well prove to have been worth the price. I wish I could believe that. You mustn't lose sight of our objectives. The sacrifice of any or all of us is a small price to pay to preserve the lives we will save if we are successful. Tom knew the risks. So did Bruno. So do you. Knowing the risks doesn't really prepare you for losing a partner. It certainly doesn't prepare you for losing two. Nothing can prepare you. The loss of an operative is never expected and is always tragic. But as horrible as it sounds, it's also inevitable. It's a dangerous job. Perhaps Mr. Smith is right. Perhaps I'm not up to the task. Rubbish. You've performed remarkably well under extraordinarily difficult circumstances. I confess I was somewhat skeptical at first, but that was before I grasped the magnitude of the situation. In my entire tenure as a field operative, I never once faced a crisis this formidable, and certainly can't say I would have done so with the aplomb and competence you've demonstrated thus far. I didn't realize you were a field operative. Indeed, for 14 years. After the war, I found I was having a hard time adjusting to civilian life. Fortunately, an old acquaintance of mine was recruiting for Unity and happened to ring me one afternoon. I've never looked back. Sort of difficult to imagine, isn't it? Not at all. You flatter me. Anyhow, let's have no more self-pity. What do you say? Yes, sir. So before you served on the committee, you and Bruno were colleagues. And friends. Did you ever work together on an assignment? Frequently. We lost track of how many times we'd saved each other's lives. And you still believe he was capable of treason? In my heart? No. Intellectually? I don't quite know what to believe. No question about it. He was always a steadfast, resourceful fellow. But the history books are full of patriots turned traitors. There's no telling what a man is capable of, given the appropriate temptations. I know what I believe. I admire your conviction, and I pray you're right. Ah, Mr. Smith, I hope you have some good news. Good news would be that we hadn't lost another valuable agent on this mission. What news do we have? Well, our analysis of Agent Archer's photographs is complete. And? We have a possible lead on Dr. Schenker's whereabouts. I think we can classify that as good news. As I said, it's all relative. This harm situation isn't the only crisis in the world, and we're fast running out of competent field agents. Then suppose you get to the point and tell us what we know about Dr. Schenker so we can go fetch him. It's somewhat speculative at this point, but it's possible that harm is keeping him at a secret underground research facility in North America. We don't know the exact location of this facility, but thanks to the files Archer photographed, we know it exists, apparently in the vicinity of a lumberyard in western Washington state. It seems the site is being supplied by an American Railways passenger train. It's probably in Issaquah. Records and research has dug up evidence of various trains making That's unscheduled stops in the Riley. area over the past three weeks. At regular intervals? Indeed. Probably to drop off supplies and personnel. We're certain that at least one American Railways engineer is on the harm payroll, although several individuals may be involved. We're looking into it. What's my assignment? Phase one will be to apprehend the engineer or engineers in question so that we can interrogate them. Once you're aboard the train... How exactly am I to get aboard? We'll smuggle you into the galley car. Lovely. Anyhow, once you're aboard, you will meet with a contact who will tell you precisely whom you'll need to detain. It is safe to presume that other harmed personnel will be aboard the train, so subtlety is advisable. Needless to say, seizing the conspirators will prevent the train from making its stop so you'll have to be sure to detrain at the appropriate time. Well, after falling out of an airplane, I suppose jumping off a moving train can't be that bad. That won't be necessary. Once your objectives are complete, you must head for the caboose and detach it when you're near the lumberyard. We'll have an agent in place to switch the track and reroute you to an unused depot behind the lumberyard. This area is not likely to be heavily guarded, so you shouldn't have much difficulty getting through. 
If all goes according to plan, you will rendezvous with another undercover agent who will, we hope, have information that should help you locate the underground base. Then I grab Dr. Schenker and get the hell out. Precisely. We'll have a helicopter nearby awaiting your signal. Your flight departs in one hour, so if you need to stop by the toy shop, now's the time. Understood. Thank you for putting things in perspective for me, sir. I promise you I will do everything in my power to destroy harm. Archer? Sir? Don't let anger cloud your judgment. Revenge is an understandable impulse, but it is also a contemptible one. Our job is not to avenge, but to protect. I can't just shut off my feelings like a tap. No, but you can bridle them and use them to fuel your resolve. Destroy harm, but do it to save innocent lives, not to retaliate for those already lost. The moment you give in to wrath, you become as reprehensible as the monsters were hunting. Clearly, we are all called upon to take lies from time to time. But we must neither relish it nor agonize over it. It is a duty. But where's the simple. fun in that? Not a pleasant one, but often a necessary one. I'll do my best, sir. I have absolute confidence that you will. There was one more thing, although I'm not sure how important it is. According to one of the documents Archer photographed, it seems the Baron's wife changed her surname some time ago. Really? So her maiden name isn't McLean? It's Farnsworth. Felicity Farnsworth? Are you quite sure? Positive. Do you know of her? Aye, that I do. When she was eight years old, her father, a wealthy banker, was involved in a nasty public scandal involving unmentionable acts with a twelve-year-old boy. How dreadful. Mr. Farnsworth committed suicide shortly thereafter. Felicity and her mother, by all accounts of vapid socialite, were ruthlessly ostracized by their peers, guilt by association, presumably. Furthermore, rather than inheriting the fortune she expected, Mrs. Farnsworth discovered that her late husband had left the family in inescapable debt. She went quite mad. Several days after being institutionalized, she hung herself. My word, that poor child. Felicity fell into the custody of an elderly aunt whose lifestyle was apparently rather more severe than she was accustomed to. About a year later, the aunt took a fatal tumble down the stairs. Foul play? No mention was ever made. What happened to the girl? She ended up with a foster family where she remained until she was 14. One night she went out her bedroom window and was never seen again. Or at least no one recognized her. Astonishing. Where did you learn so much about her? I studied her. Come again? I believe I first read about her in a gossip column. I was intrigued by the similarities in our background, so I dug deeper. What similarities? Well, we both came from wealthy families. We were both orphaned at a relatively early age. Our fathers both killed themselves, although for very different reasons. We were both plunged into undesirable circumstances and resorted to rather desperate measures to survive. I found it quite uncanny at the time, although in retrospect I think we had less in common than I once believed. Adversity is the truest test of character. The strong are strengthened by it, the weak made weaker. It sounds like this Baroness didn't have the wherewithal to cope with her misfortunes. It's a common trend among terrorists and bullies that they imagine themselves persecuted by fate and therefore feel justified in harming others. You're frothing. Sorry, I get carried away. She's involved somehow. The Baroness? Upon what unimpeachable evidence are you basing that supposition? I just have a feeling. Ah, then the case is as good as closed. Oh, shut up, smart. I don't expect you to believe me, but I'll count on you to say something smug if I'm right. It's virtually guaranteed. I'm not smug. Acerbic, perhaps, maybe even sardonic, but not smug. Okay, sure. Whatever you need to tell yourself. <laughs> I have to agree with her, Smith. <laughs> Don't either of you have work to do. Aye, sir. Off I go. Good luck. <clears throat> All right, guys. After that uh, surreptitious summary of semantic uh, swordplay, I am going to end today's session. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed... Um, and I hope you're looking forward to the next one. As always, I'm Michael Shockman. Remember, guys, keep it real, keep it safe, keep it healthy. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.